Welcome to our lecture on artificial insemination. This presentation was adapted from the lecture of Dr. John J. Parrish. At the end of the lecture, students would be able to describe the physiology behind artificial insemination in livestock animals. The history of artificial insemination dates back at around 1322 AD when an Arab chieftain stole salmon to breed his mares. He wanted to mate his mare to a stallion owned by his rival. Hence, he performed an, art, an amateur version of art, artificial insemination we know today. It was in the year 1677 when Antoine van Leeuwenhoek used a microscope to see sperm. The diagram shows the sperm from rabbits and dogs as drawn by Antoine van Leeuwenhoek. In the year 1780, Spallanzani successfully bred two dogs with the use of AI, leading, leading to him being named as the inventor of the artificial insemination. He took salmon from the dog, placed it in the vagina of a bitch that is in heat, and get it pregnant. He then concluded that sperm could fertilize the egg. It is said that artificial insemination took off in the year 1900s. In this year, Ilya Evanov perfected AI and its practical usage for horse breeding. He came from Russia and is the first scientist to develop the methods as we know it today. He proved that this technology allows one stallion to fertilize up to 500 mares instead of the 20 to 30 mares that are bred by natural fertilization. So mo most of the work was with horses at this time, but did also some cattle and pig work. The mass breeding of cattle, however, did not come until later in the year 1933 by an AI cooperation in Denmark. So this was considered to be the first dairy AI cooperative. And in the US, you know, the first US AI cooperative was established in the year 1937 and this was located in New Jersey. In the year 1940s and the 1950s, you know, there was an increase you know, in, the, in the use of AI in the dairy cooperatives, particularly of liquid salmon. So uh, one of the problems at this time is the limited lifespan of the sperm. In the year 1960s to the 19, uh, to present, you know, there, the dairy cooperatives merge and form large companies that dominate cattle AI industry. For turkeys in the year 1960s up to present, the all turkeys bred, all turkeys were bred no via artificial insemination. So this is because of the breast muscle, which began to get very large, that they could not breed the females anymore no, by natural insemination. For swine uh, from the 1990s, it was uh, there was no a tremendous expansion in the swine AI industry. And main, this is mainly uh, because of economics. In also in the year 1990s, the, there is also a tremendous expansion of the horse AI that was brought about by breed organizations that began to accept artificial insemination. So why do we do artificial insemination? So these are the main objectives of artificial insemination. The first is genetic improvement of the livestock. We also have, uh, of course, one of the most important is uh, to be able to control disease transmission, particularly for venereal diseases. And uh, of course, we, all, we also aim to increase fertility. So for example, we call the male animals that do not have good fertility in terms of its semen performance. We also have the decrease in the breeding expense. So, of course, you we do not have to uh, to raise you know, a bull and to feed the bull on site. So we do away with that expenses. So this slide shows the status of the U.S. industry in terms of the utilization of artificial insemination. So we start with the dairy cattle. So the number of male cows in the U.S. increased to 9.4 million 
and that is according to a report by USDA in the year 2022. And uh, in terms of the use of AI, so in the US, over 66% of dairy cows are bred AI, and over 85% of registered products are product registered Holsteins now are products of AI. So that is uh, in the figure shows now that the dairy cattle has about 66% utility of AI. When we are going to compare that with a country such as Denmark and Japan, so it is lower because in these countries AI is uh, 90 to 100% practiced. When we are going to compare that with beef cattle, so for beef cattle, there are about 28.9 million beef cows in the U.S. now as of January 1, 2023. How about for the use of AI in beef cattle? So for the use of AI in beef cattle, it, it registered a lower number because that is only about 7.6% of the operations. And in terms of the utility of estrus synchronization, the rate is about 7.9%. So generally, in the U.S., the use of uh, AI in beef cattle is lower than that of the dairy cattle. And that is according to a report no, by a report in 2009. So for any technology to be adopted, it must be effective fit into the management of the operation and provide sufficient um, return on investment. So for dairies, AI fit into the management system no, because... Of course, in dairy cattle, you do the twice daily milking and heat detection together. Uh, removing the hassle and danger of hand mating dairy bulls to lactating dairy cows was a welcome change no, in the dairy cattle industry. Uh, for swine, the utilization of AI is about 90 to 95%. Uh, so in the Philippines, according to Sinan Baguio in 2017, Estimates made by local swine industry groups indicated that only about 70 to 80 percent of commercial hog producers are adapting the AI technology. So while adoption of AI by small or backyard swine raisers is estimated to be as low as 20 to 30 percent, the bore for higher service remains popular among small scale raisers, particularly in hard to reach areas. And this is uh, according to Sinan Baguio, this uh, report from the Philippines. For Turkey, so the utilization of AI is already 100% no, in the US. And again, that is because of the, you know, the breast muscle no, for the male, which is makes it heavier no, for the female. For horses, now there is also an increasing, uh, rapid increase in the utilization of artificial insemination. So one of the major goals and the advantages of artificial insemination is for genetic improvement. So of course, there is a widespread use you know, in the availability of genetically superior sires that we can use in our farms. So one of, of course, of the main um, uh, main plus point or benefit in using this is that shipping semen is considered to be much easier and less expensive than shipping live animals. So for example, one bull can breed about 500,000 cows in a lifetime. And of course, this can never be done with natural insemination. So another is after that, the semen can, can still be used no, from that particular sire. And the oldest frozen salmon recorded was 40 to 45 years old. And this is through cryopreservation of the froze or frozen salmon. Of course, um, for cryopreservation, this is not that applicable in the livestock species no, because genetic changes over time or genetics will change over time. So that old salmon may not be applicable not to be used today. So there is um, a rapid change in the genetics of the animal by a genetic improvement over the years. So those older salmon cannot be used 
practically in the livestock industry. So for frozen salmon, we can one of its advantages is that um, we trace back and get the superior traits from a particular breed of animals. So we can actually incorporate the traits that have been lost over time. So one of the major advantages of AI is also the rapid proof of sire. So under this, we have the progeny testing wherein the calf from the male will be raised or the, the calf from the male or the sire. Uh, again, when we say sire, it is the parent animal, the male parent animal. So the calf from the male will be raised until puberty. It will be bred and the offspring from that will be again be raised no, to measure the traits such as the milk production. And of course, we can also take DNA samples from a calf. Uh, we can take that from the hair to evaluate the transmitting ability of that particular offspring. And this is also known as the genomic evaluation. So of course, with, uh, when we are going to compare that with natural mating, we, we can only do about 100 of the progeny testing when we do this natural mating. Of course, another advantage is the availability of SARS, and the SARS are anywhere in the world. Uh, we can we can request you now for a salmon from a um, superior SAR that is available in uh, superior companies, you know, so breeder companies in other countries, and we can um, conveniently ship that or import that particular salmon to be incorporated in our farms. So another advantage is the danger of the bull being removed when we do AI no, versus natural mating. We also do away with uh, venereal diseases. So we reduce the transmission of venereal diseases. Uh, for example, in cattle, we have uh, the causes of venereal diseases or bacteria, viruses, protozoa. Examples of this are Campylobacter fetus, Trichomonas fetus, bovine herpes virus, Haemophilosomnos, mycoplasma, and bovine viral diarrhea. So these are examples of the diseases that can be transmitted venereally. And of course, you know, the, we can do away with these diseases via artificial insemination. We can also promote crossbreeding via AI. So we can try it without buying the sire. And we can also use this for developing designer animals. So this is an example of crossbreeding in horses. So the stallion is a Frisian, and we have the mare is the thoroughbred. So what we do is we collect you know, the semen from the stallion via artificial uh, vagina, and we inseminate that with the mare to produce a cross thoroughbred and Frisian. We also use this in developing designer dogs, and this is via crossbreeding. So how do we define designer dogs? So these are dogs that are intentionally crossbred from two purebred dogs of different breeds, specifically to appeal to a market for certain desirable traits. So designer breeds combine the best of both worlds, and registered dog breeds are mixed on purpose to create designer uh, designer breeds. Now, so for example, we have Poodle and the Golden Retriever. So this is the offspring of that. And we also have the Poodle and the Labrador Retriever to produce uh, this particular breed that is an example of a designer dog. So in the pig industry, the economics was considered to be the major driver in the expansion, in the use of artificial insemination. So when uh, this is very applicable, applicable for commercial uh, swine farms, wherein there is a very significant increase in the operations. So for example, the number of sows raised are from 50,000 farms, 50,000 no, sow level in a farm. So this would require no, about also 5,000 boars that are needed. So when we are going to not use artificial insemination, so we of course we have to uh, 
raise and feed and maintain this much uh, number of boars in order to inseminate all the sows. But uh, when we do artificial insemination, we can do away with that. Now, for example, uh, when we are going to compare you know, the, the ratio between the sow and the boar, or rather the boar to the sow, when uh, using our natural service, the ratio between the boar to the sow is only 1 is to 15 to 1 is to 25, when an average of 1 is to 17 or 18. But when we are going to use artificial insemination, the boar to sow ratio can be increased to 1 is to 150 to 1 is to 400. You know, that is according to the MSD Veterinary Manual. Another is, uh, of course, the cost of the sire genetics you know, can be reduced. So you can, again, you can, you can have many doses you know, per ejaculate that can be inseminated to your sow. So the cost of maintaining SARS for breeding is the number one driver you know, for AI. SAR maintenance cost can be reduced, so fewer SARS are required you know, for, uh, for the farm when we are going to do AI. So these are some of the disadvantages of artificial insemination. Number one is the labor you know, in detecting estrus. Number two is the course, you need a skilled and trained inseminator to do the AI, particularly in cattle. The bull salmon is the best when we are going to compare that with other um, salmon. So the bull is still uh, the best salmon. The use of poor male may increase. So it is important to do the test in order to uh, evaluate you know, the, the breeding for performance of the male. Technology to store cold or frozen salmon, but of course, it's difficult to maintain. You have to have um, the resources in order to, to procure this particular equipment, particularly when you do the frozen salmon in, for example, in the pool.